this is uh, my Monday morning routine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, trash day. Uh, getting ready for another day at the plant. Uh, I kind of do things and try to break it up from being routine, but I can't help it. It's just me. <laughs> there we go. Alrighty. Babe. Let's go. Jamie. Any moment. I'm getting ready to go. I know. Come on. Well, come on. <laughs> Love, Love you. you. Have a good day. All righty. Okay, I'm off to work. Tell so you want me going out the door. All righty. Snowing, man, in April. Wow. Can you still hear me? Okay. Yeah. Monday mornings. Uh, probably one of the last Monday mornings for as far as the uh, the bulk of people that's still left in the plant. Uh, last Tuesday was. Uh, I think we had about 65 retire. That's going to retire. The rest of the people is going to wait till the plant actually closes right now. So, and that should be April 24th officially. Uh, but I'm anticipating this week, as of Thursday's productions will cease. Uh, I think we're going to have a big, big, big layoff then. I don't want to say massive, but it'll put us down to maybe if we have 30, 30 people, 35 left in the plant, we'd be doing good. So. And that's be mostly for maintenance, cleanup, crews, that kind of thing. No production will be going on after Thursday. And of course, Friday is Good Friday, and we have that in our contract language as a holiday, paid holiday, so that's why I'm saying Thursday and not Friday. Yep. You've been driving this for how many years? And it's coming to an end. 25. Well, actually, if I'd have made it to July, it'd have been 26. So I'll say 25, over 25 and a half years. Uh, coming around the road and going this way in the morning. Routines are very hard to break. I'll make the adjustments. Uh, don't know when, <laughs> but I'll make the adjustments. But yes, I, uh, my wife, kind of gets on me sometimes. He says, you go the same way every day, same way all the time. You should go a different way, this way or a different way. People can see you going the same way. I said, hey. And sometimes I'll, I'll vary off of how I come home and stuff, but uh, it's a lot quicker for me to go this way than to go out and hit Broadway or Martin Luther King Boulevard. Uh, I take a chance on, as you can see, uh, well, you can't see, but it's a train going down that track over there. Muncie is notorious for trains. It's one of my reasons why I leave so early to get into the plant uh, so I can, you know, not worry about the train stopping me. And I have been caught a couple of times, but, uh, man. I just can't believe it's going to come to an end. And I've been sitting here on the peer-to-peer -peer counseling group. Uh, we've been talking on how to get the word out to the membership to, to realize the reality of the plant closing. Uh, and here I am. <laughs> it's coming to an end. Uh, the reality of it is, <coughs> excuse me, the reality of it is becoming real. Um, I get a lot of questions, you know, hey, what you gonna do, man, what you gonna do? Um, 
I know what opportunities I have um, to, to, to say exactly what I want to do. Uh, I would have to say that I want to take advantage of going to school. Uh, the opportunity is there. The government's going to help us or pay for our uh, schooling up to two years. And so I'm going to take advantage of that. Not knowing uh, what's really out there in this geographical area of Delaware County, Muncie, um, that has a lot to do with what you're going to school for. That has a lot to do with what uh, Ivy Tech and the other schools will be pushing you to take as far as courses go. Uh, but I do know I need to take advantage of that. Unless opportunity presents itself to where I can get a job and start working right away. If you're looking at 14 to 15 dollars an hour, even 13 right now, you'd have to say, wow, you know, in Muncie right now, that would have to be the top paying jobs. So if that takes place, uh, I'd say I'd have to go ahead and and take that opportunity. But it would depend on the job, if it was any commuting or anything like that. So there's a lot of things to look at. I don't know. Right now, <laughs> I'm still kind of numbed about it. And going through the effects bargaining that I have been over the last year, year and a half, I think my first, my first thing I want to do is just kind of wind down in the first couple of three weeks after the closing. I need to kind of relieve the stress that I've been under and kind of regroup and then really get myself together on what I want to do. But I do want to take advantage of the schooling. And so this is my shortcut way to work. Uh, a lot of people like to continue to go down Main Street and uh, it's a lot of lights for me, but I don't know. I just, I'm a little different. It's just the way I like to come to work this way and pick up 32. I uh, stop it. Usually, I used to stop back there at my uh, friendly neighborhood VP, but they've closed it down now, so <laughs> I had to move on. Born and raised here. Uh, tell me a little bit about how you feel uh, with this all closing. With this closing and just seeing what has happened in Muncie uh, over the years, uh, I just I feel real sad in that matter. Uh, there's just no jobs. I mean, this used to be one of the largest manufacturing cities. I mean, as far as manufacturing industrial work for years. Uh, we're the last major manufacturing plant to go now. And so, yes, I feel pretty bad about uh, the way that this is happening. And I'm kind of scared because you always have to deal with no jobs it seems like the crime rate goes up. Um, well, not no seeming to it, it's a, it's a fact. Crime goes up. Um, but I really hate it because Muncie, when I, uh, my, my, first, my first born was uh, my daughter, uh, Ferretta. When she was born, uh, I, in raising her here in Muncie, Indiana, I always thought Muncie, wasn't one of the real uh, large big cities and a whole lot going on as far as entertainment and all that stuff. But I always thought that Muncie was a pretty safe place to raise a family. It was always easy for me to go visit the bigger cities on vacations or what have you. But to, to raise a family, I always thought Muncie was, was right up there at the top. And that what I'm going to see leave because now is you can't raise a family here because you have nowhere to work mostly. Uh, people are leaving to go find jobs and with the crime rate coming up from people got to feed their families they're going to do what they got to do so therefore that that makes it a little dangerous too as far as raising family and it's not just months it's everywhere but born, being born and raised here that's the difference that I will see in this community uh, and that's one of the things that I loved about Muncie. You know, we used to have friends and relatives that would come here to visit, and they would always, uh, uh, man, ain't nothing to do here, ain't nothing to do. And you know, we, we have a few things to do, but to me, it was just a better place to raise, because I used to hear the stories from their families and stuff of what's going on in the cities. 
And I always thought that Muncie was a safer place. I have to have my newspaper. This is one of my ritual stops here, so I'm gonna run in and grab a newspaper real quick, if that's okay. All right. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How you doing today? This being for you? Yeah, that's been. How you doing, man? I'm a little depressed. I found out one of my friends from high school, Terrell Quarles, passed away. Oh, okay. Uh, Anthony and Stephanie, his older brother and sister, uh, we graduated in 87. He graduated 88, I think, a year after us. Right, right. So yeah, to... yeah. I couldn't put a face with the name, but every, everybody I know knows him. So yeah, he's so young. I, I think he had a heart problem or something like right, that. Right, right. Well, I'm not positive. I'm gonna find out. But I'll, when I hear something, I'll let you know what. What's okay. Up with that. Thank you. Have yeah, a good day. Go see. All right. On Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. Yeah, we'll go another thing there's a lot of uh, people passing and uh, me and him we talk every morning uh, that's the thing about longevity and jobs uh, you get to make friends in different spots and like on my way to work every morning we sit there and talk how's his day going and my day going and you know it just end up being friends which you don't even realize it you know that, I think that's pretty cool now that you know I had to make a special trip once the plant closed <laughs> to come all the way over here to get a newspaper you know it's not on my way to work like normally that's the sad part of it so but uh, yes uh, getting back to that uh, Muncie will definitely be different if it ain't already changing because of all the other plants that closed, uh, I mean, we've lost uh, the Chevy plant. It's level now. If you go down 8th Street, West 8th Street, uh, heck, uh, come out of high school and started in uh, manufacturing uh, jobs at that time in 70, 78 when I got hired there at the Chevy plant that's no longer there. And it was a big, massive layoff is the reason why I ended up leaving there. and. I got on here at Borg Warner. Uh, never thought I'd see this day. I actually did thought I had another four years to get my 30 and that I was going to be able to see my son, my youngest son, get through college or at least get the first three years of college. Uh, now I've got to back up and try a whole nother plan here. Uh, and hopefully I will get it done. You know, my wife's still working. That's a, that's, a, that's a blessing in itself. She works at Ball State. Uh, at one time she did work out here at Borg Warner and uh, she got tired of getting laid off, come back to work, laid off, come back to work. So when she did get a land a good job at Ball State, she decided to stay. And hey, lo and behold, it turns out to be the best thing she ever done as far as a decision on keeping a job. So, uh, but we'll manage, we'll, we'll manage. I, uh, I'm gonna keep my faith. God is always first in my life. Uh, I love my wife and kids. Uh, but it is coming to an end. This is a really, really scary week. And I don't mean it as a, in a frightening way scary, but just scary because come Thursday, it would really, really be uh, reality coming, setting in, that uh, the plant is closing. So it's just part of it, I guess, you know, I'm just trying to mentally get ready for that. I don't know how you can. You just have to take it in stride as, as it comes. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, That's some of your coworkers and you've been talking about it. A lot of them, uh, especially on our chaplain's committee, we, we sit up there on Tuesdays and, and talk about a lot of this and what people are dealing with and some of the emotions that are going on in the plant. And the thing that we pick up on is that uh, what we have in common is that we know God will make a, make a way. And uh, a lot of people 
uh, for whatever their reasons are, their faith is not in that in that way, and it's more devastating to them and more uh, uh, critical. Uh, they feel no hope, and we've been trying to get the message out and really talk to people about that. Now we've had some good responses on that, but. Uh, a lot of people, those who are in their mid-40s, come right out of high school and been working there for 25 plus years, or right at 25 years, 24, 23, and it's all they know. So they're real scared, and trying to talk with them has been a challenge because if it ain't what they want to hear, you don't know what you're talking about. And so, but we, we hang in there and we keep continuing to get the message out and try to talk to them and let them understand that, you know, there is a brighter day. For one, we need to take advantage of the schooling that is being provided by the government because of our jobs leaving the country. So, uh, you know, we just have to keep talking positive to them and they have to, it's hard, don't get me wrong, it's, it, I know, I understand their feeling, it's a scary feeling. Uh, the day of a $22 an hour job, is, is gone by the wayside. And if this country has its way about it, uh, the union jobs are gone by the wayside. It's really hard to uh, hold on to union jobs anymore. Um, and that's all by design is the way I feel. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons we're closing. Uh, we've always been a productive plant, always. I mean, Borg Warner Corporation built their corporation off of Warner Gear Muncie plant. So I just think that uh, they've gotten what they wanted in this country. They wanted to kill the middle class, and that's what they're doing. But back to your question about the people, uh, they're very upset and they're very angry. And a lot of it the union had to take on because they feel that it was something that the union should have done, could have done, needed to do, whatever their excuse was. Um, but the reality of it is it was these corporations don't make plans at the last minute. This, their plans are ten, either, from five to 10 to 15 years down the road. So they're planning on closing this plant. They've been knowing for a long time. Uh, we just found out about it when they decided to let us know. <laughs> so uh, it's not the union's fault. Uh, we've always tried to work with them. We give them over $50 million in this last contract and concessions. Uh, to me, it seemed like it just financed the, the closing that much faster. This is my opinion. So, but here I am, arriving to work. And we'll, we'll do what we have to do. I mean, you know, it's in their control. They're wanting to close it. We're going to have to turn the page and move on. I mean, that's just, it's a sad thing. It's a sad day in Muncie, but in reality, that's what it is. I don't like it, but I'm having to accept it. So, like I said, that's just the way it is. I don't know. Good old Borg Warner. Here we are, Monday morning, April 6, 2009. Counting down the days. <laughs> You might get some funny looks from the security guards, but I'll explain it to them when I get up there. If, as long as you just go around right back out that way, okay. you'll be all right. And then uh, I'll let you go into the door, and if you could, once it closes, come right back out and then give me the mic. Oh, okay. okay. Going up to the front door? Yeah. I like try and get you actually walking in. Okay, well. I can't go in. Can we stop it for a second then? Yeah. I'll even come back to, oh, okay, you already got it on. <laughs> hold on, hold on. There he is. What they're doing is uh, Ball State Historical. 
society. They're just doing a documentary on the closing of the plant. He's not going to go in. Okay. He just wants to film me walking in, and then I got to come back out and give him the mic back. Is that okay? okay? Sure. Okay. We're good. How are we doing this morning? Yeah. Another day. Another day at the factory. Yeah. As they used to say, another day in paradise. Well, <laughs> nope. Not anymore. Got it? All right. Another day, another day. Are you gonna need the dome light on again? <laughs> no, we're good. Okay, I didn't know. Like, get rid of the music there. Did you have anything that came Shame. to mind you wanted to talk about on the way home? Well, uh, basically it was another, another day in the office. Uh, it's just a little different now with the plant closing. Um, had a lot of questions when I got there. Uh, people uh, having questions about, you know, I get calls a lot from the retirees wanting to know questions on what they need to do about their insurance. Uh, that's really been a heavy uh, topic since uh, the companies come out and said that they're going to get rid of their insurance and uh, so I kind of you know they know kind of but I really feel for them because they're got a lot of them in old age now and the company's way of letting them know is to just mail these documents to them and uh, you know you're in your 70s and some are even 80 trying to read these documents and not understanding mostly what the company is trying to do. So uh, being on the committee, the committee uh, uh, is supposed to take care of insurance. Uh, at one time we did have an, an insurance beneficiary rep, but a oh, couple of contracts ago the company got rid of them. So we've had to, as a committee, had to take on those uh, issues when it came down to health care. Uh, and today it's ever since they made the announcement of getting rid of the insurance it's just it gets real full trying to return the calls and uh, some of the retirees you got to you hear their stories and it's just heartbreaking because now they're looking at do I uh, pay for my prescriptions or do I get something to eat you know uh, it's really sad it's really sad now the company is trying to uh, come up with an insurance plan that they can get on uh, but the company is not backing this insurance plan they don't want to be the provider uh, but it's really hard because now you got people with pre-existing illnesses that you know it's just really really hard to find them some insurance uh, some of the stories I mean even some of them are breaking down crying and it gets very emotional uh, trying to listen to some of their sob stories there if for lack of a better word, Sob. Uh, and I just feel for him. I really do. I mean, it's just, I don't know how else to put it in words. It's really, this country really needs to wake up. I mean, the way we treat our veterans and, and our elderly people and our homeless people, I really think there's time for a wake up call for this country. If we are to able to turn ourselves around and become the country that we once was, um, we really need to take a hard look at that. Am I not talking loud enough? No, yeah, you're fine. We need to really take a hard look at that. I just don't, I don't get it. I mean, but I was able to, you know, able to help the people that needed help today. Uh, I had one particular uh, spouse uh, whose uh, husband retired and He's, he's ill right now, and we've had these release forms that need to be signed by every employee that the company and the union have come to an agreement on this plant closing compensation. 
and therefore everybody has to sign that in order to start getting your compensation. And by him being ill and not able to sign it, it was an issue and the spouse was really worried and, and nervous about that, thinking he wasn't going to get his, because you had to have him in in a certain time. Uh, but we were able to, to address that this morning and able to get, get it uh, dealt with. So uh, everybody's just going along with it now. They're, they're turning their forms in and getting them signed so they can get this thing behind them. Everybody's a lot of people ready to just move on. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, you know, you got a lot of people that don't like it the way it went. Uh, you know, this health insurance thing. We still don't know the real reason why they closed the plant. Uh, it was just a decision that they made. Uh, it wasn't something like they're looking at bankruptcy or anything like that. Uh, as far as we know, they were still profitable. Uh, the stock looked like it's uh, rising again. Uh, so we just, we don't know the real reason. I don't think we'll ever know the real reason why they closed the plant just one of those things. Uh, the thing about it, you know, it was Monday and I knew over the weekend I would get calls that come in and people had questions and stuff like that. Uh, you're pretty up coming into work, but then you get kind of a little down when you leave work because of, of, of the things that are going on and the stories that you hear, uh, the concerns that people have. Uh, even though we didn't come to an agreement and had this uh, closing package agreement signed and ratified, uh, there's still a little bit of intricates that needs to be done and dealt with, and that's what we're going through right now. So people still have little questions and things and concerns uh, about down the road. Some of the questions we can answer, and then, you know, some of them we can't. Uh, so we're just trying to deal with that. Right now, uh, we're trying to deal with the unemployment issue, uh, which is uh, it's another issue on, uh, this is not income that we're receiving. It's just an agreement that they're willing to give us this money because they are no longer going to keep the plant open. And we, didn't, we don't know how the unemployment people are going to treat us on this because we should be still entitled to our employment because this is not an income that we're receiving any, for a worker, you know. So that's another issue on top of that. Uh, but it was a typical day today. Uh, like I said, I always, when I leave, I'm a little down. Uh, you know, I kind of pick myself up as I get home and uh, wind down and uh, look forward to coming in the next day. Uh, but going in there now, with the way the plant looks right now, it's so empty and you can tell all the uh, machinery is being moved up towards the front of the plant where they're getting ready to ship them out. Uh, it's real quiet in there versus all the noise you normally hear. Uh, if you talk to anybody that's worked in a manufacturing uh, facility, especially the type that uh, Borg Warner is, you got a lot of people that has hearing problems because of all the noise and everything. But right now, it's just so quiet, you can, you know, you can talk with the whisper now. Basically, you used to have to kind of talk real loud to get people to understand or hear, hear what you're saying. So that's, that's an eye-opener, too, also, as far as reality is coming close or to an end. Uh, just talking with some people this morning. Uh, they can't wait to sign up so they can go ahead and move on with their lives. Uh, we're still trying to encourage the people to uh, take advantage of the schooling that we're being offered by the government. Uh, there's some people that just feel like they're too old, they don't want to go to school, and they're just going to try to find, an, you know, try to find employment somewhere else. Uh, but, I, you know, I keep telling them that it's not going to cost them anything, and you got the government is going to give you up to two years towards an associate degree. You would think they would just go ahead and take advantage of it, but everyone has to make their own decision. So. Um, but just being there for them, trying to help them get through this is where, is where I'm at. Uh, I just want to help people as best I can, give them the information they need, point them in the direction they should go. Uh, and I think that's just what being president of the union uh, and administrative part of it, uh, that, that is, uh, is my obligation. Uh, 
to make sure that everybody understands what's, what's happening and, and try to help them as best I can. Um, like I said, I'm a, normally I don't get off to 3.30, but uh, and sometimes I run out to my union hall. Uh, but today I got some personal things that I have to take care of. And so uh, I'm leaving at lunchtime for the day and calling it today as far as anything to do with the union and, and Borg Warner. Uh, I got some appointments that I need to take care of myself. And uh, so I'm just going to go home and shower and go ahead and go to my appointments. I'm sorry. Oh, how was the mood in there today with uh, everybody? Uh, basically, today from the about 10 or 12 people I got to talk to today, uh, it's, it's real calm. Uh, like I said earlier, it's just like, you know, they're ready to get it over with. They are uh, more or less going through the motions. There's, there's the anger part of it has really kind of died off. You know, if they're knowing or coming to the reality of it that it's being uh, it's a done deal. Uh, we do have our release forms that were passed out Friday. So everybody is trying to uh, make sure that they sign the release forms to to start the process of their uh, compensation for the plant closing. Uh, and basically, it's, like I said, it's just a little calm. Um, the, the reality of it is really, really, really coming in. Like I said, Thursday is our last productional day, so we're looking at a big, massive layoff. We do not know the number, but it's going to be a big layoff. We do know that. Uh, and you know, people, they really understand. You know, they, the most of them just kept saying that, you know, it is what it is. We're at this point now that we're ready to move on. Um, they've signed the papers and, and they're just ready to move on. I mean, uh, they got some concerns. I had one person ask me, well, what if they file bankrupts? You know, and, it, it, and questions like that are really hard to answer. I mean, you're talking about looking into the future and we just don't have that uh, peripheral uh, glass crystal ball or what have you to be able to say that well we know they're not uh, the only thing we can say is that we do have signed documents uh, both sides signed them and we just need to uh, have a little faith that you know that that's not going to happen uh, there wasn't any indication that we thought that they would have to file bankrupt they're not like GM situation where GM has a lot of obligations as far as how they do the monies for their job banks and all this other stuff that uh, General Motors has and the and the benefits that General Motors has. So, uh, Boyd Warner has never indicated to us that it looked like that they would you know file bankruptcy, uh, but it's 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 coming down. It's coming down to an end, and people are are seeing now, you know, the reality of it. Uh, the questions that come up really right now is that, okay, we signed the paper, is it a legit document? And so we were informing them that our lawyers on the union side have looked it over, their lawyers on the company side have looked it over, and they both got together and came up with this document, to, this release form that we should sign. So I was trying to assure people that it was okay to sign. And, and that was another worry that some of them had. Uh, but the, the morale, uh, they're just waiting. That's all they're doing. They're showing up to work. And it's always been a smooth transition the whole time for two whole years now. People have came to work, showed up, they did their job. There was no uh, sabotaging of machinery or you know stuff like that. People. Uh, all the way to the end, have been good workers, dedicated workers to Borg Warner. And that's a good thing. Um, but right now, it's just, they're waiting on Thursday. Basically, they're waiting on Thursday. They know that's the end of the production. There's not going to be a lot of uh, hurry to build anything right now because they know the end is there. Uh, it's just basically going through the motions. So, uh, I know they're getting a little tired of the security checks going in and out of the plant but they know that's part of it and they've accepted that also uh, they have no problem uh, it was kind of a little a uh, little nerve-wracking in the beginning you know to have yourself you know with the wand or the metal detector and all that but 
it was something the company felt like they had to do in order to keep keep things secured in the place. And they know emotions were real high, especially there uh, about four or five months ago. Uh, but outside of that, it, it's winding down. It really is. I'm gonna get out, and then uh, once I get right there, if you want, you can go ahead and get out. I'm just gonna get you getting out of your car and going into home. Okay. Wow. Think it's springtime by now, but <laughs> don't seem that way, does it? 